Okay, again, this video is part of a series. We're looking at using Netcat uh, as a web server, which again is something that you would do in a pinch or for fun, not for a productive server. But we're, hopefully I'm showing you some things that you may have not known about being able to use this. So far, uh, I've shown you how to pass it files and command output and also how to embed images and sounds and uh, videos as well uh, using the server, uh, using Netcat. Well, today we're going to take it a little bit further. Let's say you have some sort of document that you want to to pass to it. So, for example, let me go ahead. Oh, and this again, part of a series. If I didn't say that, link in the description or at the end of this video for the full series. Definitely watch previous videos, or you might be a little lost. I'm opening up LibreOffice, and I am going to create a little document here. I'm going to drag some images over. I'm going to put them in different places. And I am going to type in hello world. Uh, I am going to make that font rather large. And I'm going to use a special font. So there we go. Let's say I want to set up a server that displays this in a web page. Can we do that? Well, using the techniques we've used previously, it would take a lot of work. You'd have to, uh, you know, write up the HTML code, embed each image, blah, blah, blah. Well, luckily, uh, if you're working in LibreOffice here, you can go File, Export. Uh, we can go to the file our server is in, and we're going to call it index.html and uh, make sure that we have HTML selected here. And we're going to click Save. And what that just did, if we open up that file here, is it creating an HTML file uh, with all the images embedded. Uh, and also, let's go ahead and just go ahead and uh, we're going to cat that out to our, our busy box. So go back to our web browser here. So again, we're saying here this is a web server and that you connected successfully. And then we're going to pass it that file. And if we come down here and refresh, it did not work. Hmm. Let's try that again. I'm so silly. It did work. <laughs> we just didn't look at the whole page. It's down here. So if we were to look at the, the, the file here, uh, vim index, you can see that it passes it the doc type and it has all this information embedded in here. Uh, you can see the base 64. So it embedded all that we needed. But let's look at our original document. Hello world up here, images down here, and our website doesn't look like that. Why is that? Well, the problem here is HTML. Uh, <laughs> we're, it's giving all the information, but it's just not displaying it right. And if you had a very basic document, that might work. And um, but depending on how big I make my web browser, it might display different. So it kind of works, right? Well, let's make it so it looks exactly the same every single time in all web browsers. How's that, okay? So you might think, what document format can do that? And you might be right if you said something like PDF. Well, you're mostly right. You're right up until the fact that it won't work in this case, but we will make it work. So I'm going to take the same Office document. I'm going to say create a PDF. I'm going to go to that folder. I'm going to call it index2.pdf. Save that. And if I go here and here, and let me just open up that PDF file xdg open our index to PDF. This is what the PDF looks like. But can we serve that up? And you might think that we'd be able to do something like this. Same thing as before. But we're going to say cat index 2. And we'll refresh down here. Oh, it tries. It sees that it's a PDF file, but it doesn't load. I don't know why. And there might be a way to get that to load properly. But let's convert that PDF to HTML. You might say, but Chris, we just tried creating an HTML file from that document, and it did not work. And you'd be right. But 
we're going to convert it using a different tool. So there is a program that you can get, should be in a repository, it's called PDF2 HTML EX, capital EX there. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to generate an HTML file using, I'm going to say this wrong, it's latex, latex, whatever, which is a, a format for making documents, to put it simply. Do not confuse this program. Do not confuse it with 2HTML. That will give you a horribly formatted. That, that's okay, maybe in some cases, if you just want to grab some text out of an HTML file. Uh, but no, that, that's, that's no good. It's PDF2, the number 2, HTML EX. And we're going to give it the index2 file. And by default, if you don't give it an output, it's going to create an HTML file called index2.html. Whatever, wherever this PDF was called, same thing, but with HTML. Now, if we were to run our same command as before, but instead of passing BusyBox the PDF file, we pass it the HTML file. We'll hit enter. It'll come down here. We'll refresh this. And lo and behold, it looks just like our original document. It will format it perfectly. Uh, you will have this gray area in the background because unlike a regular HTML document, which will change size, uh, depending on what size your screen is, what browser you're on, all this different stuff, this, uh, I'm going to call it latex. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, it's L-A-T-E-X. Latex, latex, I'm going to latex. Um, the latex is going to make it like a PDF file to where it displays exactly the same in all browsers. And this is, this is I've, I've used this for other uses uh, in the past, but it will look the same on your cell phone, on your desktop, on your tablet. It will always display the same. It's not responsive. It's not going to change size, but you will get a static thing. And it's not just an image. They, they are separate. Uh, well, some things might be images. So, so like your text here, it embedded the font. And then our images here, it obviously merged them as one image because they were touching there. So it's very smart and we'll look at how the page is displayed and decide what needs to be converted to an image, what needs to be converted to a separate image, blah, blah, blah. So if we go in here and we can actually look at this file, vimindex2.html, .html, and we go to the very top. You can see that it already tells our server this is a doc uh, HTML file, a doc type. Uh, it gives you a link to the project here. And if we scroll through here, you can see that there's a lot of CSS in here. Uh, there's JavaScript in here. And there's the HTML in here. And there's even the base64 if we come up here. There's base64. They, they've embedded the font that we used as an HTML, which also, you know, make sure not that most people will get in trouble for this, but you know, fonts can be and usually are copyrighted. So you may not be allowed to do this. Make sure you have the rights to use your fonts, but uh, everything all embedded in a single, and it has all this JavaScript that looks at what type of browser are you using? And it changes how it works for different browsers. And I've never had a browser that I've used, at least the current browser, that um, that it didn't display the same in all all browsers. So that is it. And quickly, uh, so you can do that with any PDF file. If you have an existing PDF file or any anything, I mean, on your system, you can print to PDF from anything. I can go to a web page and I can say print to PDF, although sometimes printing to PDF from a web page doesn't make the web page look exactly like uh, it originally does. But if you have anything, you can print to PDF, whatever it's going to look like as a PDF, you can convert it using uh, PDF to HTML EX and then you can you can use that on any web server and uh, or in this case using our, our netcat and uh, I might do other tutorials on things you can do with this program because it's really easy to make uh, documents take documents either a word document or a PDF convert to this and then using HTML5 you can make the content editable editable edible Ed ed not edible it's not edible you can't eat it editable and, um, or sections of it editable. Ed ed yeah, why is that so hard to say? Editable. Uh, and then you can send people a link to your web server and they can fill out the document and print it up. Not that that's the best way to do things. You really want to submit forms, but if they have forms that they need to fill out and print, that's a great way to do it rather than giving someone a Word document that 
might not look the same on their machine or they might not have the office application that you use to open it. Uh, anyway, that is all for this series. I think I'm done with the series now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you learned something. Again, lots and lots of people have done, uh, you know, examples on using uh, Netcat uh, to, to, as a web server, but uh, I hope that I showed you how to use it in a way that works better with different versions of Netcat or even NCAT and maybe took it steps further to where we actually were able to display real content, images and audio and formatted documents using a very lightweight, simple Netcat server. And again, use a real HTTP server when you can. BusyBox has one built in, and most likely if you're on a very lightweight system, you have BusyBox built in, but sometimes you'll open up a, a, a router or a modem or something, and they have BusyBox, but stripped down, and they don't have the HTTP server. And maybe you don't have time or the tools to copy over a full version or the space to copy a full version. Maybe though, maybe, I'm assuming if they remove the HTTP uh, server that, uh, that they prior removed Netcat, but if it's there, you can use it in a pinch. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day. Be sure to visit my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. A link to that in the description as well. I really, I really, really do appreciate the support, and I hope that you have a great day.